Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling. It's time for the Fraser on Fraser True Crime Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Adam Fraser. With me is Wes Corwin. Today we're going to be discussing the Weeping Lotus murders that took place in the Seattle area around 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> approximately 50 years. <laughs> if we had if we had to ballpark it, and we do, uh, it was about. I, I think I did the math, and it's like 46 years ago. Oh, so I'm just we... round. I'm just rounding it up to there 50. The, the... All right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. No, but we're talking about I mean, this, it, it, this. We're talking about the episode of Frasier, season two, episode what is it? 13. Episode 13. Retirement is murder. Retirement. Uh, where we finally get some answers about the weeping lotus murder that 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 Martin has been working so hard to crack this case. Uh, even even in retirement, it's it's like the one case that he could never he could never solve. I believe and it haunts him. It it is it is something that he has brought up. I think a couple times. I'm looking at the at the KACL 780.net script. And I believe it came up in season one, episode four. I hate Fraser Crane. In season one, episode six, he uh, Martin has brought up the Weeping Lotus murder as the case he never solved. And if you want to go into our own podcast history, a couple episodes ago, the last episode we had uh, Lana on, we uh, pitched episode ideas, and one of mine was uh, without knowing this episode existed, an episode where Martin and Daphne solved the Weeping Lotus case, not knowing. That we're about to un- we're about to crack this case wide open. We're about to finally get into what happened and figure this thing out. And, and, and I don't know if you want to you want to talk about this at the, at the beginning or the end. But I mean, I'm I've been really excited to hear what what your overall impression because I know you've been looking forward to this. I, this is this I have said from the beginning that I I'm stunned that we have characters one of which is a retired police officer who had to re- who did not want to retire is still actively involved with the police community goes to bars hangs out with the cops uh, uh, who was uh, was forced into retirement because he was shot in the hip and uh, his live-in assistant psychic uh, and some for some reason we're following this AM radio host that just lives with them <laughs> for some reason every episode's about this guy and not the cop and the psychic we have th- this. This would the idea of a police officer and a psychic is the basis of so many police procedurals and go- and goofy cop dramas and goofy cop comedies. Now it's so weird right. to be like, yeah, but we got to follow this uh, buffoon as he travels from point to point and irritates his uh, radio producer. Well, um, and and w- and we really like injecting. Frasier into like other genres or, or rather other things into Frasier so it, it's kind of fun that this thing canonically exists within the Frasier universe this uh this mystery uh, this grisly murder that that took place uh which is apparently sort of just a parody of of the Black Dahlia murders apparently just a just a, a lot of goofy details around James Elroy's the Black Dahlia which is supposed to uh, very closely parallel this uh the situation. So, so let's get into it. I get, I suppose uh, we start off. Uh, it's Fra- it's in Fraser's apartment. It's night. He's looking out on it onto his balcony. He's he's making comments about you know the the city lights are twinkling. Lovers steal a kiss in the park, and here at Shea Crane, my father and his assistant sit hunched over twenty year old photographs of a murdered hooker. Life's a banquet. Life is a ba- what an asshole. <laughs> sort of conti- continuing. I think I think that's a great line. I I, I I I I thought that was funny. It's a perfectly fine line. I just feel like it's weird. Fraser doesn't think a murdered hooker deserves some kind of justice. I it, first of all, Fraser, no one's bothering you. If you want to go do your own thing. <laughs> Martin is just looking at photos and trying to figure something out. It, it, it's none of your, He's not hurting you if he wants to look at this unsolved case. If right. anything, Fraser is missing. An, the the one of the things Fraser looks over his shoulder and realizes much later that Martin is missing details. If anything, Fraser is missing details because he is completely missing the upcoming boom of real crime podcasts. And if he, <laughs> as a good radio host, he could tap into that. 20 years before it takes off and have Martin on as a guest and I assume that's never going to happen I say that no. now but I also assumed be, based on what you told me early on we'd never solve the Weeping Lotus case 
and here we are. So here we are. Here, um, so yeah. maybe, maybe later, very similar to how we open this podcast, Fraser is going to have a whispery welcome to the Fraser. And with me is my father, who solved the Weeping Lotus murder, uh, <laughs> allegedly, unless he secretly did it. That's what the next seven episodes are going to be about. <laughs> this is that gotcha um, journalism. I, I want I, I I want so badly to be there to be an episode of Frasier where uh, Martin uh, get, does one does that hunt to killer uh, yeah. monthly <laughs> subscription box and he just gets really obsessed with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That uh, would be that would be fantastic. This episode, by the way, brought to you by Hunt to Killer. Brought to you by Hunt to Hunt to Killer. Uh, go go to their go to their website and type in the code uh, Frasier. Frasier. 21 <laughs> Frazier Frazier 21 Frazier on Frazier 21 to receive uh, a discount on something it's a loot uh, it's it's like a mo- it's a monthly loot box uh, it has a it has a corpse in it it is a crime to send it to you <laughs> they frame you for a crime and <laughs> then you frame, have to prove your innocence you have to prove we, we, they like to raise the stakes they like to put it in a situation where you know if you if you <laughs> if you know if, like the old days if you rented a movie and you didn't get it back you owed a fee if we send you the corpse and you don't solve the crime you are the murderer <laughs> and that's just how that's just how it puts a little stakes in there it makes it fun it makes it fun. yeah um so we get uh so so martin kind of shoes everybody away even daphne who's trying to be helpful i mm-hmm. I, I assume um, he's he's trying to figure out who murdered uh, this Helen. hooker, Helen. Yes, he names her. He he call Fraser calls her a hooker. Martin has the courtesy to just refer to her by her name, by her first name, which is right. appropriate for a murder victim. Yeah. So so uh, Fraser is trying to distract uh, his father because he's been he's been upset. He thinks he's obsessing over this this mm. this uh, grizzly. All these grizzly pictures, night after night. And he's like, oh, why don't we go see a movie? Why don't we go get pizza? Why don't we go get tattooed? Right. Uh, so none of that resonates with Martin. And uh, Fraser's like, well, I'm going to go out. It's a beautiful night. I'm going to go for a walk. And I'm not going by myself. And then Eddie runs in with a leash. Mm-hmm. And, and Martin's like, he likes the rhododendrons on the north side of the park. And then we fade out. <laughs> Done. So we get to the next scene uh, where we have... Uh, Frazier in the booth uh, doing a show with uh, Marjorie, who is played by... Help me out, Wes. Who she, pl- who uh, she Marjorie is played by Mary Steenbergen. Right, who, right. From um, from Step Brothers and, and Last Man on Earth. And she's very funny. She, and she's, got, she won an Oscar for uh, her part in Melvin and Howard. And she was in Back to the Future Part 3. Yeah! yeah. Back to the Future Part 3. And, and she's... And she's married to Teddy Danson in real life. She's married to old Whoopi Goldberg, Ted Danson. <laughs> old Whoopi Goldberg roasting Ted Danson. Old Google Teddy uh, Teddy Danson, <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg roast, and Gold, see what you find. Google it'll be it'll be Friars fun. Friars Club roast Ted Danson, and just tell let us know what you find. You'll find it. You'll get there. You'll know what you're, you'll know what you, you know what <laughs> you'll know what it is when you see it. When you see it, you'll be like, "Oh, this is what they're talking." About. Yeah, no, you'll you'll get there. You'll figure it out. Um, so Marjorie's calling in because Fraser apparently has helped her with uh, with conquering his, her fear of heights. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's taken a uh, she's taken a ride. She's gone up to the very top of the Seattle Space Needle, and she's having lunch there. And during the conversation, she screams. Uh, and Frazier's like, what, what happened? And, and Marjorie's like, oh, I just looked down. And Frazier's like, well, don't do that, Marjorie. And she's like, okay, well, I'm sorry. I, I guess I freaked out. And then she yells again. Uh-huh. And Frazier's like, don't look down. And Marjorie's like, oh, no, my check just came. Because uh, it's a, up, uh, it's a yeah. sizable check. Uh, this, right. I assume it's very expensive to eat at the Seattle. It's it's kind of like, I assume it's like a tourist trap kind of thing. Yeah. Almost. In, in, in We call it a, a misdirection, where you do one thing based on uh, logical stimuli, and then the thing repeats, but then it's based on illogical stimuli, and you laugh at the incongruity and the absurdity. Uh, yeah. No. Fantastic. Well, yep. That's, that's a joke. That's the joke. Thank you. Thank you, Professor yeah. Comedy. Yes, absolutely. Glad to glad to help with that. Um. So, 
Oh, uh, we got uh, so so the show ends. We have Bulldog returning. He's back to his old ways, Bulldog. Mm-hmm. Uh, he after only. I don't know, probably it's been like, what, a week since the last episode where he and Roz were get doing a show together? Conceivably, presumably, yeah. Um, but now he's back to his old sexual harassing ways. Yep. Uh, uh, we, we don't know if it, it's very conceivable that Bulldog is, like, trying to fix. If it has been a week, he's he walks up to Roz, pulls out a pair of tickets, and he's like, Hey, come, we, we want to go on a date, you, me, and the Sonics and Knicks tonight. And Roz apparently has season tickets. Is not, and then he's like, "Oh, well, we." They mentioned I, that. That that's that's a that's a detail that they brought that that was mentioned in earlier episodes. Oh, that she has season tickets. Season tickets doesn't need. Remember there there was there was the guy she who sits behind her that she was worried that the back of her head was uh, unattractive. Adam, I hate to correct you. You're thinking of the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, that's a football team. This is the Sonics, which were the basketball team. Oh God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, well, I it's, thought it was this. I thought it was the same thing. No, wait, no. no, no. I, the the Seahawks are the football team, and if we go back, if you check the tape, audience, uh, audience, really quick, close the tab with Ted Danson. You already found it, and open up the tab <laughs> for the episode. A couple that that you'll find that it was the Seahawks. She was at a Seahawks game, which is the football team. Sonics were the basketball team. Uh, this has been uh, Frasier on Frasier with your host, Wes Corwin. <laughs> nah, come on. I'm, I'm resigning. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, uh, Roz, uh, but apparently Roz has season tickets to every Seattle-based team, which might just be uh, off the top of my head, the Seattle Supersonics playing basketball and the Seahawks playing. Oh, and there's the Mariners. There's, they're the baseball team. They're the ones right. that, like, Bulldog says are really bad, and then Frasier... Uh, Frasier has had that line. Let's move on. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sports teams in Seattle, and I'm getting caught on details. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, yeah. he, he's, he's basically just offering Roz a chance to go to a, a, a basketball game together. Yes. And Roz, of course, shoots him down, as she, is, as she does. Um, uh, and then, what is it? Uh, I think... I, yeah, I, I well, I know. I think she has a joke where she's like, "Oh well, uh, Bulldog says, oh well, what? Why is it that the ones who want it the most put up the biggest struggle?" Roz re- replies, "Because when I finally do give in, I want it to be. I want us to enjoy it all the more. That is, if I'm not too distracted by the fact that every man on earth has died. Because she wouldn't. She, the only way she would uh, have sex with him is because he was the last man on earth." That, that that's your professor comedy lesson. There, <laughs> that's what that joke meant. There we go. Um, uh, so a bulldog then uh, is like almost had her there, and Fraser's like, yeah, it was. Pretty, it could have gone either way. Uh, bulldog throws the tickets onto uh, the little uh, the the host table. The table. Uh, yeah. Because basically that that that's going to kick off the second act. Uh, is these tickets, and he needs to leave them there. And I don't know if there's a good reason for him to give he, them. He, sa- he says he could get them anytime he wants. He could get wants. them anytime he wants, so I'll just leave them here, and whatever happens, happens. Whatever. Maybe it'll lead to wacky shenanigans. Maybe Who knows? Maybe we'll get into some wacky mishaps. Uh, uh, Niles meets Bulldog, which is a scene that this, hasn't happened the, before. Yeah, I think this is the first time Niles and Bulldog have met on screen. Together uh, at last. Thank goodness together we Together at last. We get to see some uh, of their repartee. Uh, Niles asks uh, uh, Bulldog, as a sportsman, uh, why the local media doesn't carry the Ivy League squash standings. And Bulldog it just sort of laughs and... And turns to Frasier, he's like, oh my god, it's another one just like you. Did some gypsy put a curse on your family? (laughs) Right. Then he's like, I gotta It's a funny line. It's a funny, it's a funny, it is a funny line. I I think we need a Frasier spinoff where Frasier, he he pisses off a gypsy, and the gypsy traps him in the body of Eddie the dog. Right. And then, and then he has to do a hundred good deeds in order to to, to get back his, his, his body. Yeah. That's what yep. it's a hundred good deeds for Eddie for, Crane. For Eddie, for yeah. Oh, you're. Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> wait. Hold on a second. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going too. Am I going too fast for you, Wes? You're going a little. <laughs> hold on. So I think I. I. So he. Wait. Hold on. 
So, a, a, first of all, Adam, a Romani person. Gypsy is offensive, and I trust that you would Fine, know. fine. No, it was a homeless person. Anyway. A, a Romani... <laughs> okay. So, in the, in the, in the, in the metafiction... Ed, wait. Eddie the dog... Hold on, because you said Eddie Crane. Are you saying Eddie the dog pisses off a homeless person who then curses No, Eddie no. Fraser p- pisses off a homeless person. And so, he who... gets put in Eddie's body, Sp- and Eddie right. gets put in Fraser's body. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that, but that but would be But obviously, great. That's what ha- that would be the ultimate punishment, and Fraser has to rush through a hundred more good deeds. I was thinking, like, Eddie's, like, personality and, 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 and mind is just sort of suppressed, and then Fraser just kind of poof disappears. What a hell. What a hell for Eddie the dog. <laughs> yeah. I, don't like, I don't like thinking about that, Adam. We, no, we, no. That Let's this. move on. No, here's what I think. Hold on. We're, we're, okay, we're, okay, we're, okay. We've almost got gold here. Give me a second. Uh, two separate home, uh, home-challenged people. What it, with the term nowadays. Uh, on one side of the city... Frazier pisses off one of them, and on the other side of the city, Eddie the dog pisses off the other. They switch bodies because of un- two unrelated curses, and they both have to perform 101 good deeds. Otherwise, they don't switch. Even if this one performs 101 good deeds and this one is incapable because there's a dog piloting a man's body, they won't switch. You'll just get kicked into another body and continue. Basically, uh, have you seen Quantum Leap? <laughs> I have. I want, I want Scott that. Scott Bakula. I want, yeah, with Scott Bakula. I want, uh, first of all, Scott Bakula I want in the show as one of the homeless men. Homeless. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll just switch, get, get into some body switching, uh, dog uh, comedy, get into some dog comedy. Both the idea of a, I, I, I will, I will shoot straight with you. Mo, I, I have a pilot written. Uh, I, at one point I, I took the script for Tim Allen's The Shaggy Dog. And I right. put that in a Google Doc, and I feel like we could <laughs> switch some names around, and we could just yeah. No one will be the wiser. <laughs> no one would know. How would they know? Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, so we so so Niles and Fra- Fraser get to talking. Sure. Um, he Fraser, I think, suggests is the one who suggests that uh, they go and get their dad out of the house because he's been obsessed with he's he's on one of his uh weeping lotus binges again mm-hmm. um so now it's like oh well we tried distracting him before we took him to the arboretum we took him to the zen garden mm-hmm. wait a minute the zen garden is in the arboretum uh, is it possible that we've only taken him one place <laughs> which is a good i like that joke i was i thought that was fun um, so there, so Frazier is the one who grabs the tickets off the off the table and is like, "Let's take him to this basketball game," right. and, and and it's like the perfect it's the perfect male bonding ritual. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, "Well, can't we just go into the woods, kill something, and have done with it?" Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Frazier glares. He's like, "All right," and then uh, it'll give him a chance to see the Tacoma Dome, uh, which is where the Sonics play their basketball. Where when when there was a team in Seattle, they have since moved to Oklahoma City. They played the Tacoma Dome. Now says, I've already seen it. They did a home show. You know, that's where I got the idea to stencil a grape arbor on our Wilkes dresser. And Fraser says, I'm a teamster compared to you. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, we get to, we cut to the Tacoma Dome uh, mm-hmm. interior, fade in. Um, and we see Frazier and, 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 or no, Niles and Martin. They're sitting in their seats. Uh, there's a guy uh, selling peanuts. Uh, Niles keeps uh, standing up in his seat and looking behind him, and Martin's like, "What are you doing?" And, and Niles like, "Oh, I'm I'm just calculating our escape route in t- case of urban unrest, in case of fire or urban unrest, in case there's one of those one of those." Maris riots. taught me that. Yeah, Maris. Uh, whenever you walk into a building, know the exits in case there's urban unrest. <laughs> So Martin's like, you love her, don't you? And Miles like, yes, I do. I I want to cheat on her, but I do love her. <laughs> I I we have a we have a weird open thing, but I also sometimes want to bend outside of that open thing to cheat on people she's not aware. Of. Anyway, Dad, why do you ask? And Martin, it just helps to know that you love her. Uh, yeah. Is yep. There we go. So so Fraser gets back. He's brought uh, beer for Martin and and wine for him and Niles. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know he's he's he, Fraser's trying to get into the spirit of it. He's 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 talking about uh, you know well oh they got to make a certain the it, it all it all works because they take this ball you see 
There's yeah. this, they call a basketball, yeah. and they got to shoot it into a hoop. And then at some point a dog shows up and they've got they've got to argue with the ref about whether or not a dog's allowed to play basketball. <laughs> Frazier's only ever seen the film Air Bud in, in terms of basketball and that's the, when he gets he's anticipating something very similar to that experience. Right. Yeah. At um, some point the the ref they uh, they will frequently uh, all the referees are carrying a different rule book and they're comparing <laughs> with each other where the rules intersect. It's 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 a lot like Congress where they all have different sets of rules they have to abide by. There are checks and balances in basketball. And and dogs just fuck that whole thing. Dogs up. just completely met. Uh, one, you know, when a dog gets on the court, one referee pulls out his rule book and is like, "This isn't what the founders intended." <laughs> This isn't what the founders of basketball attended. <laughs> when George, George basketball <laughs> will be is turning in his grave. When George Washington basketball <laughs> proposed this game as he crossed the Delaware, he insisted we had standards, and this dog ruins all of those. No women or animals. <laughs> no women or animals. That was the those were the first two rules of basketball. No women or animals, and then after that, uh, the ball should be the size of a fist. Uh, drinking was allowed on the, the w those rules we changed, but not the first two, not the first two. So, um, we get, uh, oh, 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 so, so Martin, so Frazier realizes Martin isn't really paying attention. Right. And he's, 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 he's still thinking about the weepus, weeping he, Lotus murder. He's, he asks for a pen and he wants to make a note on the ballistics report and he wants to, right. so he doesn't forget it. He, he's he's I, what, what is it there's some detail that he keeps coming back to it's 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 like the oh it's the trajectory of the bullet the, the when trajectory it entered, of the bullet uh, it, it came from a downwards trajectory wow. even though helen uh was helen very was, was very five, tall five seven she was five seven right. even even a you know if you're a, if you're a, a pretty tall person you would shoot straight you wouldn't be shooting necessarily downward why is it why it, it's it's tormenting martin uh, Frazier is trying to get him to think about another detail. Uh, he wants to stop Starks. It, like the key for the Sonics to win is to stop Starks, referring to John Starks, uh, who was a basketball player playing for the Knicks. We already established this game is between the Sonics and the Knicks. Uh, Starks, John Stark, uh, or sorry, is it Rick? It might be Rick Starks. I'm blowing this. I'm completely. <laughs> uh, no, you're doing. You're yeah. dead. I, I depend on you for the sports commentary. It, 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 I'm I'm glad to report it was John Starks. One of my favorite games of. Uh, if, if you've never seen, if you're not a, if you're not a sports person, skip like a minute. But one of my favorite performances is John Starks in the uh, was it, I think the 1994 NBA Finals. Uh, uh, the Knicks were playing the Rockets. And he shot O oh, for like eighteen. He had the worst game wow. of his entire life. Those it, are he became those are synonymous numbers. with being just awful in the clutch. Just and he is a very good basketball player. He led them to Game Seven, which is where it all matters. And then he blew it really hard. And if you ever want to, you you can find on YouTube John Stark's fourth quarter. Just a terrible performance. Someone who has spent their entire life playing basketball, looking like. They've never played basketball before in their life. Just, uh, I I don't know if you uh, if you recall uh, the jersey when when the kid swaps into. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Is this kid... all we're gonna be doing? Is just old, <laughs> just old Nickelodeon and, yeah. and, and, and Disney I, show bits. I thought that was the whole podcast, Adam. This didn't. That's just... kind of been the entire. That's been the entire series this up didn't until this just point. Happen. We've been in this. We've been in this mode. If you no, like, I know. I, I know. assume much like let's say Eddie piloting Fraser's body and Fraser piloting Eddie's body. Oh, maybe Eddie Eddie was piloting John Stark's body that night. Is what happened. <laughs> He, he looked like a jersey. lost. He looked like a lost dog trying to yeah, or a or a young child trying to learn about self esteem was piloting John Stark's body and then shot 0 for 18 and learned he shouldn't believe in himself and that's also fine. He, uh, was, he was up against the kid who found Michael Jordan's sneakers and put them on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That same night, uh, Clyde Drexler found a, a pair of his dad's shoes and put them on and wanted to look, wanted to be like Mike. So that goes. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I've forgotten where we are. <laughs> oh, we are. So we're at the we're at the basketball game. Uh, that we have a couple more bits. Uh, we can run yeah. through them real quick. Uh, Frazier wants a bag of peanuts. Uh, Niles at this point has put on a pair of headphones. 
because right. he doesn't really care about the game. Uh, Frazier's like, peanuts. And the peanut guy from off screen throws the peanuts at Niles. And he's like, they're pelting me with peanuts. And he throws it back. And then the peanut guy throws it back. And it's a fun back and forth as Frazier is like, he's throwing, he, uh, those are mine. Stop throwing them. Uh, and the and other th- Niles, I, I like the thing that Niles said is he's like, that, that hooligan is pelting with peanuts. And by the look of that tray, he's come, he's come prepared. prepared. <laughs> like he brought all of these, he's, he's got a big box. He's got a big tray full of peanuts. Uh, bags of peanuts, and he brought them all to pelt them at the audience. You know, how, you know how basketball games go. Yeah, uh, uh, we we get um, we get an explanation for why Martin has taken a sudden interest in in the, in solving this murder. Um, well, I mean, we he he's been it's been said that he's been doing working on this case on and off for the past twenty years. Uh, but Frazier, you know, ask him what what's got him so riled up now. And Martin's like, oh, well, you know, when Helen was murdered, I made a promise to her mother. I said, no matter how long it took, I'd find her killer. Right. Well, I, I turns out she's an old lady now, um, and she's living in a home somewhere, and she just doesn't have a lot of time left. So I'm really trying to get this thing solved. Uh, right. So, yeah. Well, so it, That night when, when Helen died, I, uh, both myself and... And O.J. Simpson looked down at her eyes. We, we promised we'd find the killer. We promised we'd find the real killer. And O.J., then he got into some legal trouble. I haven't heard from him in a while. But I, So it's just me. I don't now know I'm, what that guy's up to. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to now. I, uh, you know, but uh, Maybe he's I, making another Naked Gun movie. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I heard he got into acting. And good for him, you know? It's important. Heard he got into acting and sports memorabilia. And that's good. I'm glad... <laughs> glad it's good to have a hobby. Like I have the case, and he has his jerseys wherever they are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so he feel Martin feels pressure to solve this. Uh, Helen's mother is doesn't have long, and he wants to solve the case before she passes on. So Martin right. leaves. He, he but we never to, really mention Helen's mother again in this episode. Never, though. never comes up. They never call Helen's. I, you There's think never that would be the last part of the thing is he calls Helen's mother to close that loop. But presumably he doesn't. And and things. and then it's like he makes the call and she's like, "Oh no, she died this morning." <gasps> oh, oh, oh you, no. were, you were too late, Martin. You were too late, Martin. You you didn't do it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you didn't you bl- do it. You blew it. You, you blew it. You could have you, you could have solved it while she was still on this earth, but you didn't. You you, you blew it. You got and then we it. just and then we just end the show. End it. Close. Down note. Uh, slow slow fade uh to black is how that goes um, it's not it's not always going to be a funny ending people it's no, sometimes sometimes, it's, sometimes, sometimes life is, is is brutal sometimes it's bleak sometimes it's awful yeah. um so we get to oh it, it's we're we go back to fraser department martin left the basketball game he he his sons martin. brought him to the basketball game he, he just he, left because well, he, he was. He went to go get the. He went to go make a phone call, and maybe he came back later. It's not really. Cl- maybe. But his, presumably he had a. What they okay, really quick. There's one joke where a fan comes and sits down next to Martin. Uh, sits down next to Niles, and he's like, "Man, traffic tonight is murder. Got to the game so late. What's the score?" And Niles takes off his headphones and says, "West Side Story," because he's ha. listening to a musical. Uh, then we cut later that night. Martin is sitting next to Daphne. Uh, Frazier and Niles come home uh, later. Martin thanks them for taking him to a basketball game, and he, they're like, oh, we just wish you could have hung out and gone to dinner with us afterwards. We went to this one place, and it had one flaw. The best kind of meal is something you can complain about that's very small and otherwise. So I believe Martin hung out with them for the game, and then he was like, let's go to this fancy restaurant. And he's like, no, I'm going to go solve this case. We, we also get another important detail about the murder in that... Um uh, Martin is is bugged by this picture of the crime scene where Helen appears to have been trying to write the word help in the dirt, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, why would she do that? Uh, and Daphne says, well, I suppose the word howdy would have been a bit too cheery given the circumstances. A bit too cheery. Uh, but it, it's something that's sticking out in Martin's mind is like, if she was dying, why would she write help? Why if wouldn't she? Anyone who anyone who came across her dead body, they would first see help, and it's like, oh my god, I gotta help this person, and then they would look up and they would see a dead body. It's like, oh, I guess I'm they too late. Would, they would see a corpse before they read. They were like, oh man, <laughs> look at the look at this uh, woman. She's near dead. Oh, hang on, there's some reading material that covers this corpse. 
that's actually how the the hunt a killer thing works is you find the corpse and there's also the last thing they scrawled and they scroll it into the box and it's like oh well you got to read the whole thing to get all the details and stuff you know so so uh so martin's like it doesn't make any sense and uh uh fraser and niles they're uh they're talking about their little uh their their meal yeah like you mentioned they had an excellent meal but there was one tiny flaw that and and fraser's like oh well what's better than an exquisite meal but an exquisite meal with one tiny flaw that we can pick at all night and and they're and and fraser and Oz are just sipping brandy meanwhile we see martin at the table and he is just in turmoil Mm -hmm. he's got his hands he's got his head in his hands he is just he is haunted by this case Mm-hmm. Um, and his sons are over there just talking about sh- shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's having a hard time. He's ha- Martin is having a really hard time about this. And it, there's he a should brief- be the one drinking. There is a brief moment where we have a funny, th- funny line that doesn't go with the rest of it, but it, it it goes with the relationship between Fraser and Niles, where he's like, "I'm beat. I'm I'm gonna wake up early in the morning, get back to this case. I'm gonna get some sleep." And Fraser says, "Night." And Niles says, "Don't forget, brush your teeth and say your prayers." And Martin laughs and is like, oh, that's what I said to you guys when you were kids, huh? And Fraser's like, no, you didn't. And Martin goes, oh, I meant to. And I was like, yeah, we knew that. And then just, uh, just You told a, us to go to hell the bed and <laughs> shut the fuck up. You think, that, you think that I can wish you good night when there are hookers dead in these streets? <laughs> that's what you said to us, Dad. But we knew you meant brush your teeth and say your prayers. It's it just in... Uh, th- there are many jokes in Fraser that are very, like... I, I, I draw reference to Oscar Wilde all the time, like, but up up but but up up where it's just rhythmic, and this played a little bit more with the awkwardness of, like, oh, yeah, I didn't always, I, I didn't always say, like, good night, love you, because I, I never did that. I meant to. I'm older now. I'm sorry. And it's just fun. It's just a fun thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where that joke fits into <laughs> anything in this episode. I, I like it. I like jokes that don't fit anywhere else. <laughs> I thought it was good. Well, um, uh, this, so, this, so it's taken us a while, but we're finally going to get into the meat of this episode where right, the meat, yes, Frazier sits down at the desk for just a second. And, uh, apparently he's also, it's, it's him, Niles and Daphne. Yes. By the way, they all, they all sit there. They, they come to sit around the table and, uh, they, the, he ends up going through, he's, he says it's Frazier. I don't know if we establish Frazier, if he's ever put any time into listening. Well, to he says he he says that it's been a while since he he's gone over this, and exactly. he asks Daphne to kind of you know refresh his memory, and Daphne kind of gives us sort of a recap uh, some of the principal players in in the in the murder. So there's Detective Shelby, the vice cop who Ooh, finds wow, Helen's body. body. Mm-hmm. Right there's also Robitaille, uh, the logger who was an ex boyfriend of Helen's. Uh, and, and, uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, suspected of the murder, but he had an airtight alibi because he was off killing someone else at the time. He was, he was off conducting a different murder, which is pretty much the ultimate alibi. Right. Uh, not, not for that murder, but for the original murder is, it, there's no reason to lie about another murder. So if you were caught there, that's done. So if you're ever being a suspect, so if you're ever sus- sucked, sus- ugh. So if you're ever suspect of murder, the best choice is to just say that you were committing another murder at the same time that murder was occurring. I couldn't have done it, Your Honor. I was killing someone at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's also uh, Coco, the monkey. Coco, uh, the which, monkey. Which was the, which was the pet of, which was Helen's pet. Um, and was given to her by another boyfriend by the name of Clive Brisbane. Animal and trainer Clive Brisbane, who you might know from Brisbane's Amazing Apes. That's that's what that's what Niles says. He he's like, oh, I saw them in Las Vegas. Um, it was it was crazy. Uh, they did like a, a living tableau of of Washington crossing the Delaware, and uh, they they would shoot su- suction cups at his assistant's ass. Right. They were shooting. They would shoot. Sub- they were like with bows and arrows. They were shooting. Uh, some woman's ass, and it's very fun. So, so Fraser's like, uh, oh well. It, so Niles is like, well, why couldn't? Uh, I, I, it's it's either Niles or Fraser. They say like, oh well, who couldn't have Brisbane be the killer? And Daphne was like, no, he was 
He was seen at he, a racetrack at the he time. He was at the racetrack. He couldn't have possibly been there. But he is a famous animal trainer. And right. So so Frazier's like, well, there is a way he could be the killer. And 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 he and he holds up the picture of Coco, the monkey. He's like, I present you with the, the killer. killer. And uh, and it, it, it it initially comes off to me like he's saying this as a joke, but he's apparently serious about this theory. He believes that. Like at first, it is goofy, and I think he gets a lot laugh from the studio audience. But it is he is completely sincere, and he's putting pieces together, much like a Sherlock Holmes or a detective, uh, where he he runs through all the details. He 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 does draw. A relatively logical case where he's like, we've established they're capable of shooting arrows. How difficult would it be to train them to shoot a gun? Right. And then Frazier kind of makes up a detail uh, that is not in the case file, which is probably where people should be able to tell, oh, this is getting zany. Because right. uh, Frazier just makes up that she must have jilted him for someone else. Clyde Brisbane. like, oh, Robitaille, the logger. And Frazier's like, oh my god, we've, we've completely solved the case. And Daphne's like, you you solved it, Dr. Crane. And Fraser's like, well, yeah, but you were standing close by. Uh, <laughs> we've, then, done, we've done in a few minutes what it takes a true crime podcast to do over the course of a fucking year. And we didn't have to sell one t-shirt or tell people <laughs> to follow one Patreon. We didn't have to. We did it. We absolutely solved the case. Um, has a true crime podcast ever actually solved a case? They might be horribly uh, ineffective. I'm sure. I'm sure there's probably something out there. I I I don't listen to true crime podcasts. Anyway, I apologize. Feel free to tell us in the comments. Feel free to let us know about uh, the all the good that true crime podcasts do. And we we'll, won't read it. We <laughs> right. Uh, and then Niles points out that the idea of a monkey killing someone is actually a possible diabolical homage to Edgar Allan Poe who wrote a story called Murders in the Rue Morgue, and it's all about a, an orangutan who, uh, on the rooftops of Paris, murders people. And Fraser, I, I miss I miss that one. Yeah. I, I did that, that does not sound like... I, I was more into the cask of Amontillado. I, I yeah, was, me I was too. Not, the that Raven. Was, that, that sounds kind of like, more like a Goosebumps story than an Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> well, Al, Edgar Allan Poe was the R.L. Stein of his time. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely true. Ab un unconditionally true. Um, so, except not, except not quite as good. No, no, it's true. Um, so. <laughs> right. Shout out to R.L. Stein. Sure, put, him, um, put him up on the screen. Put him up. Um, so we get, so, so, so Frazier uh, quickly realizes that, wait, we can't just go running to dad with this information because we've just solved this crime that he's been trying to solve for years. How will he feel when he finds out that we did it? Um. And then, and then Fraser's like, "Oh wait, it's just you know serendipity that I happen to you know stumble across this this realization. So what if I arrange the photos in Dad's sort of crime table yeah. and just arrange them in such a way where if he I, comes to the same conclusion that I did? He's gonna look at these and go A, B, C. Of course, this is the only possible uh, way this could have played out." Uh, so he gets it, and then Martin's like, oh my gosh, what are you, Frazier, I got these set up a specific way. And then he, he has his own eureka moment, and he's like, I'll be, this is crazy. And he thinks he's solved the case, and uh, everybody wants to hear the story. And it's, and he's and like, it's, yeah, it's worth noting that he doesn't, he, at no point does Martin actually tell us out loud what his theory is. No, yeah, you're going to notice in the back half of this episode, there's a whole lot of, I can't believe we. It looks like we came to the same conclusion, right? That conclusion. No, no, no reason to say the specifics until we can have a wacky misunderstanding later. Hi, this, this is Doctor Comedy explaining how <laughs> sometimes misunderstandings and miscommunications occur, and that's the nature of humor. Doctor Comedy, I, I have I have a serious medical condition. I need surgery. Can you help me? Uh. Uh, serious medical? No, no, I can't. I, I, I need, I need surgery right now, Doctor Comedy. You gotta help me. Uh, if, if, if by surgery you mean, uh, sir, like, like, I, oh no, sir, my name isn't Sir Jury, <laughs> Doctor. It's a misunderstanding. Anyway, I'm actively dying, Doctor Comedy. You have minutes to live. <laughs> that's, that's my prognosis for you. Um. So, so. 
<laughs> so so Martin kind of shoes everybody away. He's 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 on to something. He's 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 figured it out. But he wants to um, think his own time. He, it's something where he's got to really think about it. He wants to get it all straight in his head. Needs some privacy. He's got to do some thinking. Uh, the, he'll, he, he can't, he can't be too far-fetched about it. He's got to, he's got to really think this one out and everyone gets excited. Like, oh my gosh, he looks so happy. Yeah. Uh, for D- Niles is like, oh, he looks like a kid at Christmas. And, and then we cut back to Martin who's like, oh man, what happened to my, my bullet wound photos? <laughs> what happened to my open gunshot wound photos? To which Fraser goes, follow. Uh, cause it's, cause it's Christmas. Because it's Christmas. We said it. <laughs> this is the what is this the fourth or fifth Christmas episode? Isn't it crazy that today <laughs> that we're doing this on December twenty fifth? <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, oh, there's another weird joke. Uh, not it weird in the previous way that I mentioned. Just another weird Daphne is not American joke. Uh, where uh, Fraser comes, uh, Fraser enters the apartment. Uh, Daphne's it's the on next the couch. morning, right? The, this is the next morning, and Fraser's like, "Hey, is Dad home?" And Daphne's like, "I haven't seen him since he knocked me up early this morning." And then Fraser pauses and goes, and he, he starts to put his coat up, and he goes, "What?" And then Daphne says, "Knocked me up, woke me up." It's an English expression. What does it mean here? And Fraser's like, "Oh, something else. You'd definitely be awake for it, though," which is an odd joke. Uh, especially in light of uh, Bill, you know, some, sometimes you aren't awake for it. Like if you're if you're a Bill Cosby partner, if you're with Bill Cosby, sometimes you wouldn't be awake for it, which is a just a different thing. I don't understand. It's the very difference. insensitive, Wes. Is it? I don't know anymore. I don't know. Doctor Comedy, turn in, turn in your medical license. <laughs> Doctor Comedy, you're losing your licensure right now. <laughs> Doctor Comedy, open this door. <laughs> this is the Comedy Police. Open up. Uh, uh, you can't make Bill Cosby jokes. You, we're gonna burn your licensure. You come out here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be telling jokes in back alleys from here on out. You don't have a license anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so, so Frazier's like he feels. Frazier feels guilty because he feels like, oh, it, the goof. You know, the more he thinks about it, the goofier he sounds. It sounds the idea of a monkey killing uh killing someone right uh and and daphne's like oh well you know it's not the most outlandish theory and fraser's like well yeah but you know i, I could have said it was a trained giraffe a, a trained giraffe instead and and that would explain the downward angle yeah, of he, the he, bullet the giraffe would have spat a bullet at her instead right of shooting her with a gun uh, no it's ridiculous to think that a giraffe would be able to shoot a gun although you know it, it very possible could have been a giraffe Frazier starts to think to himself, and then he starts to <laughs> doubt, doubt the whole. Moment. Wait a minute! <laughs> Wait a second! And then he he, he reaches. He under. think <laughs> he thinks back to when he was interrogating the giraffe, and he realizes everything the giraffe told him was on the board behind <laughs> him, with some poster or cup in the room. <laughs> yep. So he was Kaiser Soze. <laughs> the giraffe was Kaiser Soze the whole time. Uh, so no, uh, Martin gets home. He's just gotten back from the police station, uh, where he's apparently told the police what he thinks, uh, his, what his theory is. We still don't know what Martin's theory is, uh, how it differs from Frazier's, but we, but, but everyone assumes that they're on the same page. Right. Everyone's speaking in very vague terms intentionally to maximize the misunderstanding later. Dr. Cam. Former, do, formerly Doctor Comedy. Before my life. living under a bridge, Doctor Comedy. <laughs> living under a bridge, Mis- they, I guess I'm Mister Comedy now. <laughs> I used to be a doctor. Uh, so, so, so uh, uh, Martin is uh, feeling pretty down on himself. He uh, he says that they treated him with respect. Fraser's like they didn't make fun of you, they didn't ridicule you, and he's like, no, no, they treated us with. Respect. They he, they said, I'll check it out. Uh, just like they used to when some nutbag would come in with aluminum foil in his hat, claiming Martians were trying to steal his brain waves. And uh, Mar- Martin's like, I don't know how I came up with such a ridiculous theory. And Fraser's like, it wasn't your fault. I did it. And Martin's like, you killed her? Which was funny. Uh, and then yeah, it was. Fraser's like, no, but I, I put the pictures in a specific way. I rearranged them so that you would come. I came up with a conclusion, and I figured if I put them this way, you'd come up with it. And Martin's like, so you had the idea first? And Martin feels, and Fraser's, he's like, I can't tell you how terrible I feel. And Martin's like, 
Uh, you might have put the aluminum foil in my hat, but I walked into the station wearing it, so. Uh. And, uh, at this point we see, uh, oh. There's a, there's a knock at the door. It's Frank. We see it, has he, has he been in a previous episode, Frank? I, maybe, I don't think so, but he was, he was in fucking The Dark Knight. Oh, really? <laughs> the, was the he, actor, the, was he Do- also Ron Dean. Ron? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was one of the cops in The Dark Knight. I, I, I. I take this to mean that, <laughs> that Frasier takes place in the say in the Nolan uh, uh, Batman universe. In the in the Nolan verse, yeah, absolutely, uh, 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 yeah. So he has been in uh, a previous episode. You can't tell a crook by his cover. Oh, that's season, right. Yeah, because he, he. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't mention it then. Uh, why we didn't mention uh, wh- which part? That he was in Dark Knight. That he was in the Dark Knight. Well, yeah, Adam, we have not. We, I, I hate to tell you. You know what? We we, don't, we, we don't, might have. I'm going to probably go back and listen to that episode and realize no, that we did. No, I was did. just going to say, we don't always do the best research, you and I. <laughs> we're not, we're not the most comprehensive journalists, nor are we journalists. Uh, I, I had a doctorate in comedy about ten <laughs> minutes ago, and I lost it, and that was my only qualification. So, so, so it's Frank. Yeah, Frank from... Uh, yeah, we, we have seen him in previous episodes, you're right. Um, and so, yeah. he, he's, he's come to tell Martin, uh, you know, what they... He, he, he's, 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 uh, he's there as an ambassador right. from the police station. Right. Uh, and Martin's like, uh, oh man, Frank, I'm really sorry about that theory. And, and Frank is like, I don't know what you were thinking coming up, uh, coming up with that crazy theory. You know, we wasted a lot of time. We 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 did interrogated the guy, and we got the bastard. We got him. You crazy man. We 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 got the case. We only had to torture him for a couple hours. <laughs> we got him. So 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 he opens the door, and all the, all of Martin's cop buddies are there, and they're all they're all gonna celebrate, and and they all come in, and uh, Fraser and Daphne are, are all happy and. Uh, someone spills beer on Fraser's couch, which pr- causes him to like go to the kitchen with Daphne. So they're out of earshot. Yeah, they when go, this they next go part to happens, towels, and they, they now that Martin even is, though the kitchen is like an open kitchen, like there are no windows or doors. Right. How like, could you? He, they, how could you possibly hear them when they're all the way seven feet away from you in the kitchen? It's, it's, it's the it's it's sitcom logic where if they're off screen. You they they do, they can't be heard. It's it's a cone of silence. The kitchen to the living room, even though you can see the kitchen from the living room, of course. Right. So the cop is like, "So Marty, how'd you do it?" And Martin's like, "So for years, I thought it was Robitaille, the logger, and then I thought it was Brisbane, the animal trainer, but I was wrong." And he's like, "How did you think it was Shelby?" As you may recall, uh, dutiful mm-hmm. audience member, as you as you might be thinking, uh, Martin was focused on the help in the dirt. And he realized, based on the way the photos were, that it couldn't be have been hell. Like it could have been Shelby. Like she was writing the name of the person that was about to shoot her in the head. And somehow somebody must have kicked dirt over the S. Which is a she, weird. Which is a weird thing to like kind of gloss over. I think. Right. Like J- just an odd sort of like you know. I feel like it might make sense to be like if you look like the photo was taken this way. If you unfold it, there's the S. Which is just a weird, like... If you kind of stare at it and cross your eyes, you can can see that there's an S. That is very silly and very, like, soap opera-y, but it, like, Martin just kind of makes up. Someone must have messed up the S. So it had to have been Shelby, because, uh... And Martin's thinking back, was it me? (laughs) Was it it me the whole time? Was I kicking the dirt? (laughs) I must have kicked the dirt... And my middle name is Help. Was she writing? <laughs> was she saying I did it? Is that, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. It so was one of those. Frank it was like, one. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a crazy thing you thought that didn't make any sense. But also, once we got Shelby in the interrogation thing and shown a light in his eyes, he was like, he also confessed to thirty other murders, by the way. But he confessed to yours too. So great job, Martin. You did it. You you can call that woman and Martin's like I'll do it later. She's not dead. And <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, so Daphne, so Fr- Daphne okay. and Fraser, they're we, in the kitchen, we, out we of earshot. back shot. to the kitchen, and the audience knows at this point. Oh, Martin didn't go along with Fraser's theory, and we just reiterate it very quickly. And the Mar- Daphne's like, "I'm sorry, I ever doubted you, but you were starting to doubt if a monkey could commit a murder." And Fraser's like, "Well, I." 
I did doubt it, but I have to, I, every once in a while I need a reminder to trust my gift. I am truly a brilliant detective. I, that, that's the reason I fight crime and I saw both in the radio station <laughs> and on the streets at night. That's why I, I'm the hero this uh, Seattle deserves. Watch out, crime. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, oh, I, I did. Did we? I, I did. Did we say this? Li- okay, so we didn't say. I I remember this line. Uh, Martin says, "Did you call the girl's mother yet?" And Frank's like, "We left that for you. After all, you solved this thing." And then we don't ever call her because that, that's the avenue by which Martin gets to say, "Actually, I didn't completely solve it." Fraser also figured it out. Get in here, Fraser. Come tell everybody how you figured it. I was a cop for thirty years, and it took my son with his PhD mind. To crack this case, I have a feeling that they just forgot to tell the mom. They just like uh, it, it I kind of want I kind of want there to be like at the very like the very last episode of Frasier, like Mar- <laughs> right, Martin as, is, Martin right, is, right as they're looking wistfully out and, and, and at the at the apartment uh, that they've lived in for so long. Uh, Martin's like, oh god damn it, I forgot to call Helen's mom. <laughs> I forgot to call Helen's mom. <laughs> like like uh, they 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 do that thing where like the very last scene, very last episode, they. Martin gets into bed, they turn off the lights, and then like a couple seconds pass, and he sits up and, ah, Helen's mom! And then that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the sting for the whole, whole, whole series. So, so, Frazier gets to talking about his theory. Uh, he's, he's, he's in front of all these cops. He, he thinks that he has in, in some way cracked the case. Mm-hmm. So he goes on to explain his theory about how uh, you know, if if a monkey could be taught to impersonate George Washington, surely they could teach it how to cock a revolver, sneak up a fire escape, and lie in wait for Helen, mm-hmm. pump her full of lead, and then make his getaway. Which, uh, so, so, uh, and in fact, maybe you should be looking for any, and maybe he was even wearing the Revolutionary War regalia in order to confuse any chance witnesses. Yeah. Maybe you should be looking for any robberies that were committed by a small, hairy, powdered wi- man wearing a powdered wig. Uh, and of course, all of the all the cops are just staring at him. All silently. the cops are like, "Sorry, what? What did you just? <laughs> the I'm, fuck do you say? What did you just say to me? In my my coworkers are here. I brought my son to congratulate, <laughs> my, and you say this to my face." You say this to me? Uh, Martin get the says, fuck out of my house. Get, get out of your own home, Fraser. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, Martin uh, is like, you think the monkey was the killer? And uh, Daphne, there, there's an ongoing bit where Daphne's like, well, I was standing next to him. And now that Fraser is made to look like a fool, Daphne's like, when I said I was standing next to him, I was really most of the way across the room. And then she leaves, which is funnier than the law. <laughs> is her just cutting... <laughs> immediately out fantastic uh and fraser's like well wasn't the wasn't the monkey the killer and martin's like no it was shelby and fraser goes who's shelby <laughs> we know that daphne told him who shelby was martin's like he, was he wasn't listening to daphne he was oh yeah she's a woman fraser wouldn't listen to her uh martin was like he was a vice cop he was in love with helen and fraser's like oh well that was my second choice and everyone bursts out laughing fraser's like can i can i freshen everyone's drink and, and, and people Frank, start making making fun of Fraser. Yeah. Everyone starts going around and is help me out. Did you think the monkey's motive was jealousy, or did he do it for the insurance money? <laughs> and then uh, someone's like, "If the monkey did it, he'll swing for this because monkeys." Uh, okay, uh, wait, Fraser, mi- aren't we? Mi- oh, oh, I missed. Oh one. yeah, yeah. So there, that, uh, we, do you think we should put a tail on, on the monkey? Should we put a, Should we get someone to follow this monkey? Should we put a tail? Which, on from the looks of from the looks of the photo that we saw of Coco earlier, clearly it's a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees don't have tails. Thank Sorry, Fraser Riders. Thank you, you, Adam. You you got got this time, a- Adam. I would uh, if, if if you would if you would cross the stage, I'd like to present you with your doctorate in comedy. You oh my it. gosh, you did it. <laughs> I, I worked so hard for this. You 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 uh, wrote you wrote a dissertation and you went through all of this research and now you finally have it. After that comment, you have your own doctorate in comedy. Yes, I'll, I'm going to go to Disneyland. Ah, congratulations. So okay, uh, <laughs> so we're finally done with that bit. <laughs> done. We got to the end of it. We're at the end of the episode. We're at the end of the doctor comedy bit. Uh, uh, oh, Frazier. So, Fra- yeah. Fra- Fra- so, go ahead. Sorry. I want to say. 
Go, you say it. You say it, Dr. Comedy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who just got the doctorate in comedy, Wes. <laughs> exactly. You get to say it. You say it. Uh, so, Frazier, uh, he's he he's joining in on... He's trying to kind of make fun of himself. He's kind of trying to lessen the embarrassment by making fun of himself. And so he's like, oh, who do, who do you think the monkey will get to defend him? Clarence Darrow? At which point, no one reacts. And, it and is, Frazier, it, it is much a, like much much like a doctor in comedy, goes on to explain the joke. <laughs> goes how, on to break down how, the joke. Yeah, it was you know with the Scopes monkey trial, Darwin's theory of evolution, inherit the wind, uh, and then he he's just silent. And he looks around and he, and he he looks over at the the cop behind him and he's like, "Is that gun loaded?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very funny line. I I I, I thought that was great. I thought. I thought it'd be great if the episode just ended with with, with Frazier committing suicide out of with embarrassment. With Frazier shooting himself and everyone just going, all right, well, uh, I guess I'll be hitting the old dusty trail. <laughs> great job, so, Martin. Sorry for your dead son. Uh, <laughs> so so we get our end credits uh, skit. Uh, Frazier walks through the front door of his apartment. He sees Daphne sprawled out on the couch. She's covered in 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 what presumably blood. Uh, and we see Eddie hovering above her with with a revolver in his mouth. And 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 Frazier just kind of looks at them. And eventually Martin comes out with a bottle of ketchup. And da- and him and Daphne start laughing at Frazier. And it's a big it's a big ha ha because the dog murdered. Yeah. Yeah. I, I all I want now, all I want for the rest of the series is for people to goof on Frasier with uh, <laughs> Eric Andre's style uh, animal murder pranks. That's all. I, I want people to never let this go. I want this to happen every week. I mean, we'll we'll get into. I mean, that that's conceivable, Wes. There might be an episode coming up, uh, maybe uh, sometime soon, where we get into Frasier getting pranked a lot by Ooh. a certain. By a certain radio uh, uh, sports jockey, um, so we'll, we'll get into th- that's that's that, but that's that's gonna that's a ways off. So we still got we still got other episodes, including the episode that we're gonna be talking about next. Well, but first, I I, I want to ask Wes. Um, there was a lot of build up to this episode. I I know you were kind of looking forward to it. Did it live up to expectations? Uh, well. So I'm glad that Martin solved the case. It, it, it's kind of surprising that this is one of the details we're given about his character, and we just close the loop like that. But it, uh, at first I was worried, and I, uh, irrationally so, it turns out, that, uh, I mean, obviously whenever Frazier thinks he's doing anything right, it's going to blow up in his face. But at right. the time I was like, how is it that Martin would have tried to solve this case for 20 years and then Frazier just stumbles across it. But it turns out it continues to be... Uh, Frazier's a little bit of a pompous, so subsequently he thinks he can do anything that people have put more time, effort into just because he has a, a, a doctorate in psychology and the human mind. So he just he, he thinks he can get into anything and solve it immediately. I, my, the, per, the part of me that likes mysteries wishes there was a little bit more detail and opportunity for the viewer to get in on it. But also, the show's a comedy. It was supposed to, the entire point of the mystery was to create a misunderstanding so people could goof on Frazier because he, he will perpetually get goofed on. And for that purpose, it worked exactly. But I mean, we would still like that. I mean, maybe in the reboot, maybe in the Frazier reboot, maybe in we the could dark, have gritty Frazier reboot. We could have. There's another murder, yeah. and it's and it's exactly like the the Weeping Lotus murder. Right. And Frazier, he does have to solve it, and he's got, and, and he's, and like the killer's taunting him in the mail and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, that in that the, could be a thing. In the dark, gritty Frazier reboot, uh, Helen is his mother, hmm. and <laughs> Martin. When Martin was shot, it was outside of the opera, and <laughs> no, uh, you don't get to finish Martin. that. <laughs> shot, shot Helen and Frazier is there and they just left the opera he's a, he's a very young boy and Ron Dean is also in the reboot Ron Dean is also <laughs> in the reboot anyway yeah we'll, we'll get the details down but that, that that's the start of the gritty Frazier reboot so um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, talking about the next episode well in, in the next episode we're gonna be talking about the next episode right that's how it works 
That's how it works. Uh, we've got the episode, Fool Me Once, Shame on You, Fool Me Twice, dot, dot, dot. Uh, Fraser's gullibility makes him a target twice over for an identity thief. <gasps> oh, man. I... So, so he, so Fraser's uh, targeted by by a, a con man, a, a identity thief. This is, uh, I, I'm looking forward to this episode because it's got a great guest star, and I, I hope you'll stick around to to, to check it out. Mm-hmm. But um, that that's gonna be it for uh, the Fraser on Fraser podcast. Uh, I've been your host, Adam Fraser. With me is Wes Corwin. Oh, uh, I, I was wait, sorry. I lost focus. I was thinking about uh, where I'm going to sleep tonight. Because... <laughs> under the bridge, Doctor Comedy. The, That's where you live. Under the bridge, but you know, like I actually, uh, a, a fellow former comedy doctor, uh, I uh, apparently infringed on his turf. He he sleeps. Under the bridge. <laughs> so I'll have to figure out a second place. Anyway, congratulations on your on your own doctorate. Well, uh, thank you, thank you. Ho- thank hopefully, you. no one ever strikes you down for making a bad joke. No, they won't. They won't. I, I, I've learned from your mistakes. Now get the <laughs> fuck out of my sight. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I'll, right. I'll see myself out. The Fraser on Fraser podcast wishes to thank KACL780.net for providing episode transcripts and Ronald O'Connell for providing our theme song, Fraser Mitty. <laughs>